so thanks so much, Emily, and uh, uh, thanks so much to our honorable mentions and uh, uh, awardee this year, and to all the people who submitted um, uh, um, for the award as, as well. Good. So while they're sorting out, um, I, uh, I, a little thought um, based in, in, in Dan's talk. Um, he noted that there was a kind of chipping away at at the labs and, and mentioned a couple um, that, that may have closed over, over the years. And I, I think there's another way of thinking about it, which I'll, I'll touch on a little bit more during the course of my talk, um, uh, which is that you know, there's a silver lining there. Actually, um, what we're seeing is a real growth, a flourishing of these environments at libraries and related institutions that support innovative um, research and use of the digital collections that provide these labs environments. And, and that's what I'm going to be talking about a little bit in a moment, ha, um, uh, a, a little bit at, in, in, in a moment. So I've seen uh, several of you here who I think have been at almost all and certainly at the first one of these um, symposia. Um, uh, last year was our fifth, and I took the opportunity then to reflect a little bit on sort of the journey that we'd taken and what we learned along the way. And this year, I'm going to do something a bit different. Um, I'm going to try to look forward from where we are now, um, pull together some of the threads that are emerging and that give us a suggestion uh, of the direction of travel um, that, that we're going on. Um, during the course of the day, um, you'll be hearing about a lot of uh, um, super cool stuff, great work going on in the British Library and the Digital Scholarship Department, and also, I think, as, as Daniel um, pointed out, um, highlighting the work that's being done by others as well. Um, you hear a bit about some of our recent projects, advanced OCR, text recognition, 3D imaging, and more, and you'll also get a chance to hear about a great new project that we're launching together with the Turing Institute the National Institute for Data Science and AI, which is um, housed here at, at the British Library. Um, but of course, that's just the tip of the iceberg. Um, there's a substantial set of things we won't be discussing. Um, some of them, you know, just over the last few days, there was the, uh, the uh, sold out AdventureX event uh, last weekend, just Saturday and Sunday, that brought together developers um, and gamers with a passion for interactive storytelling. Um, there was a digital conversation last week on, uh, as a public event on how history is presented in video games. Um, so there's a, a, a whole bunch of wonderful stuff we'd love to have, um, take all day to tell you about, but um, I think that would, uh, uh, would stress people's patience um, uh, because there's so much wonderful stuff going on elsewhere. So um, let's, let's, let's spend a few minutes talking about um, the growing energy behind library labs worldwide. So Rolly mentioned, uh, and I at the very start, that um, the British Library work is rooted in and driven by our strategy, which is uh, the living knowledge vision. Um, and it really clearly recognizes, it calls out the revolution that we're going through um, from the analysis, the use, the exploitation of digital content and data. And I think for us, this is not an abstract uh, uh, challenge or concept. It's very concrete. You know, every day, researchers are coming into us and asking us, you know, how can they work with our digital collections? What tools can they use? How can we support their research? And matching that demand, um, you see staff working to improve their knowledge and skills, as well as better integrate digital collections into our services. So uh, what's a lab? Um, for me, uh, a library lab is a space to experiment, to innovate with digital collections and data. Um, it's both on-site and it's online. It involves digital collections and data, but also physical collections. Uh, researchers are often interested in solving their problems. They don't worry so much about whether something is digital or physical in, in many circumstances. Um, it supports researchers to do the sorts of cool new things that we're hearing about uh, today. Um, at the symposium and, and much more. And I actually like to sort of analogize it to a chemistry lab, the sort of thing that I might have um, occasionally strayed into when I was in uh, school. So 
Uh, to set up a good chemistry lab, you need some things. You need support and advice so that people don't poison themselves or uh, blow the place up. You need essential equipment like test tubes and flasks and centrifuges. You need essential supplies and ingredients uh, to be there, uh, to be well stocked, uh, well labeled, and ready to use. Uh, you need ways to measure and record your experimental setup as well as your results, and that's uh, essential underpinning for uh, good science. And in a library lab, you also need uh, su to support the community. You need to provide clear tutorials uh, and lots and lots of examples, worked examples for people to uh, be inspired by and to learn from. And finally, it needs to be integrated into people's workflows, both the researchers um, and artists, but also the staff and the institutions. This year, as we've been taking the next steps on our journey, I characterize it sometimes as the shift from experimentation to integration. And I, I don't mean by that that researchers uh, and people working with collections aren't experimenting, but I mean the services that we're offering, the underpinnings to them, are moving from this experimental and pilot phase that we've been in into one where things are properly supported and integrated. One of the, the challenges that we've been seeing, uh, a couple of the challenges here, um, is uh, the growth and the number of people who want to use our digital collections uh, and data. Uh, many of you will have heard Mahendra and uh, myself saying, you know, it always starts with a conversation, and it still does. Um, but now we've got a way for people to um, register their interest, give us some of the background information, uh, so that that conversation can be even more productive uh, than it's been before. Um, you can now request, uh, provide, you do have an online mechanism, a simple form for requesting uh, support for your digital research uh, activities. Um, and this will help us to, and is helping support more researchers than we were able to uh, in previous years uh, when we were running a labs competition and supporting people in an intense way during the course of the competition. It also helps us to do the things you have to do in an institution. You've got to allocate resources, you've got to track their usage, you've got to measure um, what you're providing and, and what you're doing. Um, and that's essential for us if we're going to be providing great help and services uh, to as many people as uh, are interested in them. A second challenge has been uh, the difficulty of supporting people on site. Um, There'll be a bunch of you here in the room today who had experience with our um, uh, existing service, uh, uh, and it's quite, been quite hard, right? So people come in, we've given them space in the staff area in the digital scholarship department, which has been wonderful, um, but that's required things like them to get security clearances and wait downstairs for someone to come down and pick them up. Uh, it's not the kind of arrangement that you'd like to have um, for the long term. Right now, we're in the process of fitting out new space uh, in the reading room. Uh, it's gonna be a place where people are gonna be able to you know, book it in advance, um, work with a collaborator, uh, work closely with, for example, a digital curator or a member of the labs team uh, super exciting. I wish I had a date to give you today. I don't quite yet, um, but we'll be blogging about it and tweeting about it um, once that space is available and open uh, in the new year. And I hope that um, many of you and your colleagues and friends back home will be able to take advantage of that uh, and those new capabilities that we'll be providing. A third challenge, uh, I think, comes from the first two, and I mentioned that before, it's that, you know, integrating with behind the scenes workflow flows. Um, so uh, the, the work that people have been doing um, in digital research environment has becoming ever so slightly um, more mainstream. Um, and as a result, it needs to be really firmly integrated into what the library does. Uh, for example, you, know, you should have the standard process to book a place where you can come and work with digital collections with some additional computational facilities. Um, uh, staff should be able to uh, respond to questions around how to use digital collections, where digital collections are, or what tools um, are available to work with them. And we've been working uh, pretty hard um, this year and will continue to, to make those things um, possible. 
Over the past couple of years, we've seen a lot of growth. Um, we've seen a lot of, con we've been in contact really with a lot of labs. They come to us and say, you know, we're interested in setting something up, we're starting to do it. Uh, can we learn from each other? What can we do? Um, and I think uh, in contrast to um, the, the couple of places that are no longer active, um, we've seen a really substantial growth. So we've seen something like uh, uh, 10 new labs in, uh, what is it, 15, 16, another 10 in 16, uh, 17, 18, and uh, another dozen planned for the next year in 2019. So you can see a really rapid growth in the number of labs. And I think this dramatically underreports. This is based on a survey that we've done recently. And you know, surveys like that, the key thing is you don't know who you're not getting uh, a hold of. Of course, um, not everyone means the same thing uh, when they talk about uh, a library lab. Although I think that core definition I used early on, um, uh, space both on-site and online for innovative research and use of digital collections, fits most of the activities um, that we've seen people talking about. Uh, a couple of points um, uh, that I've been interested to hear uh, from people about as, as, as part of a survey that we've done um, is the variation in target users. So pardon for the, the small font, but the green bar at the top there is academic researchers are of course the, the primary um, target for uh, these laboratory environments. But the second uh, most common is actually for staff and institutional colleagues. Um, in addition, uh, the third uh, most popular is around uh, um, general public and community. And fourth were creative professionals. Also frequently mentioned were software developers, schools uh, and teachers, um, and business and industry sort of rounding up the, the bottom of the list. There's also quite a mix in the way organizations fund and resources activities, which uh, harkens back again to the keynote. Um, the vast majority of them, though, had a certain amount of direct core funding from their home institutions. Um, about half of them also said they had external funding as well. Um, and about one in eight, in addition, generate some income revenue from the services that they provide. Uh, I think there were uh, a couple of surprises to me um, as we looked at the results of the survey that we did. Um, first of all, a lot of folks uh, don't facilitate access to restricted collections. They are looking at facilitating access to large scale digital collections, but not the restricted ones. Um, we as a national library with substantial digital special collections um, find that this is uh, super important. Um, secondly, uh, many of them don't provide dedicated physical space. Well, um, we also view this as super important for us. Um, now that may partly be the nature of their space otherwise, but um, the amount of room where we have at the British Library and the reading rooms for people to sit and talk at a screen with adequate computational ability is relatively um, limited. And uh, lastly, um, uh, relatively few of them were considering simultaneous access to digital and physical materials. Uh, and as I say, we, we view that as absolutely essential um, here at the British Library. So that was um, just the, the brief uh, um, remarks that I wanted to make. Um, and to conclude, uh, you know, we like to get out of the office um, uh, and work with researchers, creative professionals, and others. So get in touch if you'd like us to come out to your institution uh, next year and organize an event. Um, uh, we're scheduling them, and it uh, would uh, um, be great to uh, um, see many of you. Secondly, um, if you're thinking about a lab, maybe you're starting out with one, maybe you want to uh, learn and engage with others, um, maybe you're thinking about planning one as a, at a library or other um, similar sort of institution, then there's a community that's developing. Uh, there's a mailing list, uh, uh, which I've, I've highlighted up there. Um, we're planning face-to-face -face meetings for the coming year, um, and we hope that many of you who are uh, thinking about this um, will be in touch and be part of that community. I'll say um, from the workshop that we had a, a few weeks ago, it's uh, incredibly warm, enthusiastic people uh, trying to make a big change in how their institutions work with and support uh, digital collections and data. And lastly, um, if you want to use the British Library's digital collections, um, uh, 
and you want to explore the potential, understand how it might fit with your project, um, even figuring out how to get started with the methods, tools, and techniques, then get in touch. Um, use that form. Uh, it's online uh, now. Um, grab Mahendra or Eleanor or uh, one of the British Library uh, staff, the digital scholarship team that are here during the day. Um, it starts with a conversation. Um, let's engage in those, um, and I look forward to hearing uh, uh, from you and, and talking to you as well. Perhaps one of you will be the first to use our new reading room location uh, next year. So thanks very much for that. Um, I'm going to stop there.